In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how particles move into and out of cells by diffusion, osmosis and active transport. I'm going to start by talking to you about diffusion, which is one of the three types of movement you need to know about. So the best way to think about diffusion is to think about why you can smell something from across a room. So why can the student smell the sock from a distance? The sock can be smelt because sweat and other molecules are moving away from it and spreading out into the air, which is called diffusion. So this diagram shows what diffusion is like. So it's the spreading out of particles from an area of higher to lower concentration, so down its concentration gradient. And it happens because of the random movement of particles in liquids and gases. Diffusion is a passive process, which means no energy is needed and the molecules diff diffuse until they are evenly spaced apart and an equilibrium is reached. And the particles move randomly in both directions, but overall there will be a net movement in one direction. Now you need to know that small dissolved substances like oxygen and glucose can move into and out of cells through the cell membrane, but larger particles like starch and proteins can't get through the plasma membrane in this way because they are too large. So what factors affect the rate of diffusion? You need to know that the bigger the difference in concentration, so the concentration gradient, the faster the diffusion rate will be. You also need to know that the higher the temperature, the faster the diffusion rate, as the particles have more energy and therefore can move faster. And you need to know that the thinner the surface and the larger the surface area, the faster the diffusion rate, as more particles can pass through at once. Now have a go at this question to test your knowledge of diffusion. So the diagrams below show three cells in different glucose solutions. The concentration of glucose inside and outside the cell is shown in each case. Which diagram shows the situation where the net movement of glucose will be out of the cell? Is it A, B or C? And have a look at how much glucose is inside the cell compared to outside the cell. And you can pause this video here if you want to to have a think about it. The answer is B because there is a higher concentration of glucose inside the cell compared to outside. Therefore, there will be a net movement of glu glucose outside of the cell by diffusion, because the glucose will move from a higher concentration to a lower concentration, just down its concentration gradient. I'm now going to talk to you about osmosis. Osmosis is the movement of water across a partially permeable membrane from an area of higher water concentration to an area of lower water concentration. So where there's lots of water, to where there's less water. Now again we're talking about the net movement of water because the water is moving randomly in both directions but overall there will be um, a net movement in a certain direction. In this example have a think about which direction the water will move overall. You've got the water molecules in blue and the orange squash molecules in orange and you can pause the video again now to have a think about it. Overall, the water molecules will move to the left-hand side because there are more water particles on the right-hand side and then the water moves from an area of higher water concentration to an area of lower water concentration through a partially permeable membrane. Osmosis is basically diffusion, but the diffusion of water. It is a passive process, so no energy is required, as the water is just moving down its concentration gradient from a higher water concentration to a lower water concentration. So you could say that water is moving from a dilute solution, where there's lots of water, to a concentrated solution, where there's less water. Now, if you're doing the AQA uh, exam board, you'll probably do a practical uh, involving potato and sugar solution. So on the left hand side, you can see that potato has been put in pure water and the potato tubes swell. And this is because there's more water outside of the cell compared to inside. Therefore, water enters the potato cells by osmosis. But on the right hand side, in the rich sugar solution, the potato tubes shrink because water is leaving the cells due to osmosis because there's more water inside the cells compared to outside, so water leaves the potato cells by osmosis. You just need to remember that water moves from a higher water concentration to a lower water concentration when doing this practical. When doing the practical, you could be measuring the mass of the potatoes or the length of the potatoes, but just make sure you're really happy with why the potatoes are changing because of osmosis. I'm now going to talk to you about active transport. Active transport uses energy from respiration to this time move particles against their concentration gradient, so from a lower concentration to a higher concentration. 
Uh, in plants, root hairs take up minerals by active transport. And a good human example is during digestion. The villi in the small intestine will absorb uh, the soluble nutrients. Over time, the concentration of nutrients in the villi will reach an equilibrium with the concentration in the gut. Therefore, active transport is used to continue the transport of the small amounts of remaining nutrients, so such as glucose, against their concentration gradient. Because the nutrients are so important, we want to make sure we get as much into the blood supply as possible. Now, this table summarises what we've been talking about. So diffusion is the movement of particles from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration, and it doesn't require energy. Osmosis is the movement of water molecules across a partially permeable membrane from a region of higher water concentration to a region of lower water concentration. And again, it doesn't require any energy. And active transport is the movement of particles against a concentration gradient. And this time it does require energy. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, for more resources, you can go to www.biologyfocus.com.